Hey everyone and welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. Today we're going to be showing you how to take a stock dog bone mount and poly bush it out just like this. So what we're going to do is we'll do a full dismantle video, show you how the old one comes apart and we'll also show you how to fit up the new one. The only thing we won't cover is fitting but I'll show you a picture, it is only four bolts. So before we get stuck into it, let's jump into the intro. Okay guys, so before we get into the fitting and changing of the bushes, I just wanted to go over a little bit of background and a little bit of information about the bush and the bushes and the arm. Now the dog bone is a cost effective way of reducing the amount of movement from the gearbox to the engine and to the body. Um, you'll notice maybe if yours is a bit worn, you might notice that your gear stick moves um, quite a bit forwards and backwards. That could be a reason um, and it is it basically just makes it a little bit nicer. Um, it's a it's a cheap one because I mean you can get it from you can either replace it with a brand new one which is about thirty pounds um, for a genuine whole dog bone arm. Um, you can replace it like I will be with the Power Flex or Strong Flex equivalent of a polyurethane one, which is about fifty fifty five pounds if you do the front and the back. If you only do the large front bush, it's about twenty six pounds, so quite cheap. Um, you can buy a whole arm with bushes all new, which is an ECS one from Awesome GTI, of one of places, there's, I'm sure there's many places that sell it, and they're about £115, £120. Um, so it's quite a bit more expensive, but you don't have to do anything, you just literally buy it, take the old one off, fit the new one. They come with bolts as well. Um, and there's a CTS one, which much like the ECS one, I believe is Durometer rubber. So it's not actually polyurethane, it's rubber, um, and it's made is supposedly made to give you a little bit of flex but while still giving you the improved um, sort of stiffness with the least amount of movement so they're your options um, it's new stock 27 to 30 pound for the whole arm um, just take your old one off right away put a new one on um, the power flex inserts whether you use one or both um, the bigger one will be with what most people will do um, and they're about 25 to 30 pounds on ebay or most retailers that sell power flex stuff um, the whole arm, which is an ECS one, which you can replace the whole thing. Take, again, take the old one off, throw the old one away, put a new one on. Nice and simple. Um, now, what I will mention is bolts. If you're doing this, um, the bolts should be replaced. Now, you can buy them on eBay. It's four bolts, two 13mm heads, two 16mm heads. Um, and I would replace them because if they're stretch bolts, and I've heard this before where people have obviously had it on and off before, um, They've actually, when they've come to undo it, they pulled the thread out with it. Um, so you'll need to get it helical by a mechanic, which is not ideal. Um, so do bear that in mind. The bolts are £10 for four, so not expensive um, and worth doing. Um, like I said, it is two 30mm bolts, two 16mm bolts, heads. That's the size of the heads. And literally, so it's two bolts into the subframe, two bolts up into the gearbox. Um, if you've got an under tray, you'll need to remove it to get to it. Just jack the front up and it comes out very simply. Um, so fitting wise, 10 minutes, as long as you're happy jacking your car up, making it safe with stands, go underneath 230 mil, 216 mil, and it comes out. You might need a little pry bar just to give it a little push just to get it to drop out. And again, with fitting, you may just need to move the gearbox around a little bit just to get the bolts in, um, but it is relatively straightforward. So let's jump into fitting it up okay guys so we'll start with dismantling so i'll move this new one out of the way for the time being now there's only really going to need a couple of tools it's pretty straightforward you need to prise this off which usually you can do by just forcing it out the way i'll put it in the vise and we'll do that and then on the other end there is a 17 mil nut again if you have a vise ideal because it is a little bit easier um, but it is just a case of Oh, it might even be a 16. Excuse my mistake there. It's because I was using the 17 to undo the bush. Now, so this is a 16 mil. Um, 16 mil at this end. And obviously we'll prise this off that end. Now, please remember, obviously you've got this video for reference anyway, so you'll be all right, but there is a, a fixing which drops in there, which this bolt goes through. So that will fall out. So do not lose it. Can't say I didn't warn you if you do. And this goes on the same end. So if there's a hole this end, because on the other side it's completely smooth, as you can see, 
nice and smooth. So on this end, hole where the bracket goes, okay? So you don't forget. Now whether you're replacing it just for um, a stock replacement, or you're doing poly bushes or rubber, durometer. Um, durometer? Is it durometer, durometer, duro rubber, whatever it is. The other replacement. Now, obviously with this assembly of the arm, I'll give you a quick idea on cleaning, um, and we'll go from there. What I'm gonna do is move across to the vise. Okay, so now we're in the vise. Though you can't actually see that very well. Here we go. So this should just pull off, but it apparently will not. There we go. So if you give it a twist, it might come off. Sometimes they're stronger than others. We might just need to drill it a little bit just to get it off. Um, if you do that, you need a step drill to get it done. There you go. So it just pulls off. It is a bit hard um, as it has some slight serrated edges, if the camera will ever pick that up. It has some slight serrated edges on the outside. So that's off, just a good tug gets that. Obviously why we need a vise. So that's your bracket. Now, we'll start with removing this while we've got the arm wedged in there nice and tight. Um, I used a 24 mil socket because that is big enough to sort of fill the void of the bush without touching the outer casing. And I used a, I believe this is a 51 mil um, hole saw. Now, I, again, I've said, I'll say in the video later on, it's not ideal because it's got obviously a serrated edge, but it won't, you're not gonna be spinning it, so it won't damage the face. All it'll do is put a tiny dot on it, but you're gonna be repainting it anyway. And to be honest, I've actually just um, put that on the sander and just taken the sharp edges off. So it doesn't do too much damage. Now, this is why I say you need a vise because it is a lot easier to do like this. So get your vise nice and wide. It doesn't really matter which end you push from and which end you pull from. And all you want to do is get it wide enough to take both. Try and get it centered if you can. It always makes it easier if you get it center. And then you just literally wind it. The first few will be quite hard and then you'll hear it go like that. It will just start to crack. Just adjust it down a little bit so you can see better. There you go. So just hold on to the, the arm. And as you twist it, you'll just hear it. Hear it going. And then it will just pop. There you go. And that is it. So you are left with a hole. Now, let me get a cloth quickly. So I want to show you something important for refitting. So on one side, now this is the opposite side to your fixings. You have a beveled edge. Now that is, see if again we can get it on camera. You can see there's sort of a rounded edge here. And that allows you to push the new bush in that allows you to push the new bush in and it just gives it a little seat to push against and it'll go in a lot easier than if you try pushing it in from a hard 90 degree edge. So new bush goes on the rounded edge and then on the other side you've got your bolt and nut and on this edge you're going to have your bracket for the transmission. I find repetitive helps make you remember everything. So. Let's get the rest of this stripped down. And what we'll do is we'll just put this in the vise to hold it so we can crack the top. So it makes life easier if it's held. Not too tight. Um, 16 mil. And we'll just put that on top. Ugh. And that just comes loose. Now, like I said, remember when you tip it up that this insert, which is the, the nut effectively, will fall out. Now, we'll get it all apart and then I will show you, it lifts out. So this is one, a bush, two, a bush, and then obviously the nut will fall out as well. So it may be a bit stuck. So there's your bolt. Take your bolt out, pop it on the side. And then there is a sleeve in the middle. So you lift this off and it will come off in pieces. Yeah. And then this is why you need it in the vise. If it will stay there, is to pull it off. Now, 
we'll get it all on the bench and I'll show you the state of it and what we do next. So now we've got it all apart. This is the components we have. So um, I'll move one of these out of the way so we don't get confused. Right, so this is what we've got. Remember I said in here is a nut. I've left it in there so you can see it. Now, for memory, this on the top here, there's a, it's a slightly different shape. So it's flat on the bottom and then there's a slight doming on the top. Now the doming faces outwards. So when you drop it back in, the flat edge is going to drop in there like so. So what I find easier so I don't lose it is I will stick those two together so it doesn't go missing. And we're left with the actual sort of main part of the mount. Now it has two barbs or the equivalent of sort of two little bits on there. Um, and that is significant because it where is the way it slides through the bushes. Now um, the bush or the bushes are made up of two rubber components. Now on the bottom, I forgot to mention, again there's two little seating bits um, which the bush sits against, whether it's rubber or whatever, again to stop it moving. So that goes under there and sits on there. Now you can see, I mean this come off a car that done 80,000 miles, because it's always happy to have a spare because it makes life easier. And you can see how worn and how rounded the edges are. See there, it's all worn off. And obviously rubber is quite malleable anyway. If you look in here, you can actually see some of the rubber left behind. So this is gonna take some cleaning. Um, you can see bits of, bits of rubber coming out. So this was well and truly past its time. Now on the inside of this, so this goes like that onto the arm, yeah? So with the longer part of the top. So that's that, and then in the top, there's two, see there's two lines there, and that again holds this bush, which is even worse than the other one. So you can see large pieces of it. Let's get it out. See these big bits of rubber? Um, and this is completely melted at the top, and it's had quite a hard life. Plus, to be honest, there's nothing, look, there's nothing to it, it's just, a piece of rubber and again that sits where these two slots are it just sits in there and then this piece the top bit has two bits which sits pretty obvious drops into there so and then that slides onto the top bish bash bosh done so that is your rubber one that's fully dismantled now what i would recommend if you haven't got a parts cleaner because well, let's be honest, most normal people don't have a parts cleaner at home, unless you're a crazy home mechanic like myself. Well, I haven't got a parts cleaner anyway, I need to buy one, but um, I found brake cleaner, um, brake clutch cleaner, or some sort of degreaser in a spray bottle, and a scotch cloth, um, one that's not too abrasive, that will get off the worst of it. Now I have, here's one I prepared earlier, I've cleaned it up, and I have painted it black because I quite just like the sort of black look. Now, um, I've actually ordered a new one for the top because this yellow one I was given and it's a bit hammered. So I'll show you that in a minute. And um, I'll just take this one apart so you can see it. You can see the difference between the poly bush and not so push it apart see obviously if we clean the shaft i haven't painted it um, and just put a little bit of grease on it so let's do some comparisons you can see the difference straight away from the poly brush one apart from it's double the size um it fills the void that bit better so when you push it in it is a nice snug fit whereas the rubber one you can see is worn out and loose. Um, nothing wrong with fitting it with a new rubber one. That will do a better job than the old one did, certainly. Um, and again, cleaned out inside. And like I said before, it's got the two tabs which drops in there. Now, the reason I'm replacing this one is because this one is a bit worn 
at the top where it's seen a bit of a hard life. So, and that is there as well. So that sits in there, you see, it's a bit hammered compared to the original one, which when it seats in there is fixed. So that's why I'm replacing this one, but it's a great one to show you. They're not expensive. These are about 25 pounds um, for this end. But yeah, that just sits in there and you can see if you look down to the base, it fills the void completely. And obviously once you've got that on there and pinch it down a bit, it will spread out and it's there's, there's your movement. You have a little bit side to side. So that is the top. The fitting is, like I said, it's dead simple. And this just pushes on to there. And then we'll put our nut with the domed top down like that. Slide your bolt in and then you do it up. What I'll do is I'll put the torque setting here on the screen for you for this bolt there. Now it's not going to be mega tight. I think it's something like 20 newton meters, 25 newton meters. Um, but there, yeah, so there you have it. So that's that. Now we'll move on to a video showing fitting of this bush here. And so fitting the lower bush, um, which will be in a replacement to the original one, which we removed earlier. And all you're going to need for this exercise is two big either circular or square washers to fit against the bush and against the back of the housing. Um, and you'll need a nut and a bolt long enough to go through the bush and through the arm and have a little bit on the other end for a nut. Now, um, the only tools we're actually going to use today is effectively a 17 mil ratchet because I've got 17 mil nut, a spanner, and a pair of grips and a cloth. And I'll show you why. Now, what we're going to do is we'll start to wind this in <clears throat> and it will go in a little bit and then it will tip because obviously the hole of this um, mount is quite large and the hole in here, it just doesn't go in 100% straight. So all it will do is we'll get most of the, the shoulder in and then we'll just put a cloth over it and use a pair of grips just to level it up. And all that will do is just push the remainder of the seating in. Um, so I'll tell you what, if I turn this around, you can probably see it better. If you've got a vice, ideal because it makes it easier to hold um, what I'll do is I'll do this so you can see there already let it moves so you have to try and get it as straight as you can to start with um, put pop a bit of grease on the edge um, when I've removed the other bush I'll have shown you there's a bevel edge on one side and um, so we'll just jump into quickly getting this nipped up now I've used the ratchet on the side that doesn't have this so it doesn't move as much I found it a little bit easier in the past so what I want to do is just get it tight enough you get about half the the shoulder in you see there look, it started to pop in you don't want to go too much because you don't want to split the shoulder now what I'll do is oh, flip it around because it's easier for me to to do now I found doing this in the past is very simple so grab yourself a cloth because obviously you don't want to damage the bush put the cloth over and then you just want to squeeze both sides of the bush which will get the washer as well and you just tip it level and all that does is pulls it in and then you've just got to wind it up fully um, as you can see there it's gone loose and to be honest you could probably push most of it by hand but we'll do it with uh, the tools we've got just to show you And then all we have to do is just before you finish is release it because obviously it's got to get that shoulder out the other side. But we can always finish it off in the vise. Right, that should be enough. Now I have stupidly used a lock nut because that is all I have in my shed at the time. Um, but obviously you could use just a normal one, it'd be a lot easier when it comes to taking it off. Just get this wheel off. Right, so there you have it. Now let's try and just do that, won't do it. So let's try
That's not gonna work. Right, so third method, like we used to remove the old bush, I'll just use my hole saw just to space it out again. A hole saw isn't ideal, but it's not gonna damage the arm any. And then we just pop and voila, she's in. So, give it a quick clean up. There you have it. One bush installed in the end for a replacement. Now we've just got to pop the sleeve in. Uh, now the sleeve has to go, so where the nut is on the underside, you have to have the, this is where you're going to be having your uh, bracket to mount to your transmission. So this little, see if I can see it on camera, this little lower edge here, which we're obviously going to drill out the, the bracket to fit, is going to go up that end. So this is pretty, pretty simple. Little bit of sticky gear just on the shaft. This goes in. Um, half the time you can push them in, but we'll see. Probably not today. Right, so again, most of the way in, um, we'll just get my trusty cord. Just use this again just to pull it in. There we go. What we'll have to probably do is just over push it a little bit um, just to get that to protrude enough to get the bracket on. Um, as you can see, it's just not quite on the face. So we'll use, um, to be fair, we could use anything, use a bolt, a nut, anything just to give it a little push out. Um, but I'll do that when we come to fitting the bracket. So guys, now we have shown you how to take an old one, take it apart, rebuild it with all the new parts. Um, that is us. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll do another video probably in three to five days. I'm going to do a bit of an update on my project, um, discuss why you haven't seen the car very much, and just give you some more information. Also got something quite cool coming. So watch the next video, and you shall see what the surprise is. So guys, thanks for watching. That's another video from the Parrot Bros.